Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan Mubarak to all of you, dear viewers. Uh, I would like to use this opportunity to say uh, Ramadan Mubarak to His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Sabah, the Emir of Kuwait, and uh, Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Sabah, our Crown Prince. Uh, Ramadan is a, a very special time. Allah says in the Quran, the month of Ramadan is that in which the Quran was revealed, a guidance to mankind and a clear proofs of the guidance and the distinction. Al-Baqarah 185. Islam is still, as always, a very impressive way of life, not just for Muslims, but also for many other people around the world. And for many new followers, of this great message of love and unity around the world. As part of Kuwait TV2, to support awareness efforts of Islam in Kuwait, we have this new program that we will interview 30 Muslims who managed to discover Islam at a certain stage in their life. Tonight, we are pleased to meet our sister, uh, Miss Maria uh, Molina from United States. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Maria. Wa alaikum assalam. Welcome to Kuwait and welcome to our Islamic Ummah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, uh, maybe uh, we would like with you to introduce yourself to our viewers. Um, like he said, my name is Maria. Um, I'm from the U.S. Um, I converted in probably 1999. So it's been 15 years now. I was Mashallah. 19. And alhamdulillah, we have been living in Kuwait for almost four years now. And I have, alhamdulillah, five children. And Mashallah. Um, Mashallah. It's good, good alhamdulillah. Uh, and uh, when was your first encounter with Islam? Uh, it was like zero knowledge before this encounter. Zero knowledge. Um, I moved to Egypt in 1997 with my father. And I had no idea about Muslims. I had heard of Islam, but I, had, I didn't know what Muslims believed or um, what kind of book they followed. I didn't know anything about them. Not even a negative idea? No, I didn't. I, I mean, I didn't know anything about Muslims or it was all brand new to me. It was all new. Wow. Okay. And uh, how you felt about uh, your first encounter uh, visiting Egypt? Uh, what, what, what did it feel for you? Egypt was a beautiful country and the people were very warm and very nice, but for Islam, I didn't know. I saw outward symbols and I heard negative, um, negative things in the press, mostly rumors from people, um, but no real knowledge of Islam or Muslims. And so what I saw was confusing and I didn't really have anybody to explain it to me. So it wasn't a very good image in the beginning. So you're saying that your, your visit to a Muslim country confused you and it, in a way that uh, it wasn't uh, for good for you to accept Islam, for example. Right. Um, it, you know, I, nobody really talked to me about, for instance, why people were leaving in the middle of their work or school or what they were doing and they were going to the mosque or why I saw women covered um, and dressed in a different way than I was used to. Um, I, I really didn't know, it was just ignorance and so I just felt that it was probably oppressive, it was, um, you know, it, was, it wasn't something I could understand and I really didn't have any desire to pursue any knowledge about Islam. Uh, this is a very interesting image uh, to start with, uh, to learn about Islam by visiting a Muslim country. Uh, sister, we will continue discussing uh, this very important issue after the break. <laughs> We 
Welcome back, dear viewers. Uh, we are meeting, uh, discussing uh, an, a very important issue with our sister Maria Molina and her uh, first impression about Islam, which was unfortunately a negative uh, impression. And uh, we would like to know more about uh, this impression, Sister Maria. Um, so like I was saying, um, other than the negative media portrayals I was uh, hearing and reading about. The impression I got from Muslims themselves also wasn't very good. Um, I saw outward symbols I didn't understand and I really didn't have anybody to explain anything to me. Um, so it, was, it wasn't an, an easy beginning. I really didn't feel like I wanted to learn about Islam. Um, I didn't want to read about it from what I saw. I would, have, I would rather stay away, read about something else, but Islam was probably the last religion on the list I would have chose to read about. MashaAllah. As, as I can see that all that negative did not stop, stop you. So what happened next that attracted you to Islam? Well, I didn't really have anything that attracted me. Like I said, I was totally turned off and unattracted. <coughs> but from the time I was very young, um, I would consider myself fairly religious from about five. I would, I would pray without any parental coercion. And, um, they wouldn't, my parents would take me to church every Sunday, but they weren't um, really pressing me to be religious. It just was from myself. And then w this continued, you know, until I was about 16. And then one day I was sitting and thinking about the, some of the prayers they had taught me to memorize. And this is no disrespect to anybody of any religion, but this was my personal feeling. I was really shocked, you know, like sometimes you memorize a song and then later you think about the words that you were singing. This is what happened. Um, I thought about the words that they had taught me to memorize in the prayer and I couldn't believe that there were intermedi intermediaries in all my prayers. All of my prayers since I was a child had always been to God. So when I found out that I was addressing my prayers to other people besides God, I was really shocked and I was turned off. And I considered myself at that age totally agnostic. I, I didn't have any religion, although I know there is God and I know he controls everything. But I, I couldn't consider myself from this time, this, it's the same religion as my parents, they were me. Subhanallah. So you started with the, with the first part of Islam, which is La ilaha, there is no God. Right. And this is your, your start with, with looking for the real God. Right. Very interesting. So what happened next that influenced your, your uh, decision to look more into this issue? Um, it was just a feeling that I knew that there was something out there. And I knew that whatever God was going to guide people with, was going to be simple, was going to be easy for people to follow, and was going to be perfect. There weren't going to be any up in the air questions. There weren't going to be any, you know, unattainable features, you know, that I would be forced to follow. So I started to read about other religions. I knew right away that whatever it was going to be was going to have to be monotheistic. It, I, I have to believe in one God. So. I w went back to the Bible, I went back to the Old Testament, I went to, you know, I started to study these things. And in each branch of a religion I would read about, there were always some discrepancies, some issues that I would find that didn't make any sense. And when I would go to the scholar for that particular religion to ask about it, I couldn't, I couldn't get a straight answer. So this is uh, to the concept of Tawheed? Yes. Okay, so, so you started with Tawheed and you were making your all the way down to the other details. So you yes. started with the top <laughs> part of religion, subhanAllah. Uh, yeah, I have to, I mean, the other stuff is, you know, just details um, where you worship or how you worship. But the main thing was that it, uh, God has to be one and whatever he's giving us has got to be easy. It's got to be direct. So um, I, I, I just couldn't find any satisfactory answers for some of these religions. Now they all had very nice things to say, but there was just something wasn't right. 
So the concept itself. Yes, yes. Um, so it, this is, I just kept studying and I just, you know, for a while put it on hold and thought, okay, I, and I prayed that God would guide me to the correct religion that he would want us to follow. And I had to wait and see, nothing came up until one day um, I was doing more internet searches because all of my, all the information I was getting was through the internet. And I pulled up a page that was talking about angels and their role in writing down mankind's deeds. The angel on the right that writes down your good deeds and the angel on the left who writes down your bad deeds. And how Allah would judge people or God would judge people f through their deeds only. It wasn't through any, um, you know, salvation of somebody else or that you were burdened down with somebody else's sins. It was your doing only. And I Not thought, on your own. everything by your, you know, <laughs> it's up to you. So I thought, this is exactly right. From the first line I read, and it was, it turned out to be, it was, um, it was Quran Tafsir. And I didn't know I was reading Quran, and I just kept reading and reading and reading, and I thought, what is this? This is, whatever it is, this is it. Because I couldn't find any, anything wrong with it. I couldn't find, you know, any discrepancies, anything. It all seemed to make total sense. And it wasn't until I was about four or five pages down that it said it was Quran and these were Muslims. And I was so excited and I got up and I told my father, I said, you should read this, this is really interesting. He's like, okay, that's great, you know, keep going and, and tell me what you think. So, so it was a, a complete coincidence that you, you found a translated Quran and you were able to read it and understand it. Correct. Subhanallah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Uh, so, yes. Uh, and when did you decide to become a Muslim? I decided probably right away that this was the real thing. Um, and, but I, I didn't want to rush into anything. Um, I was afraid that there was something later on that was going to come up and I, you know, I wouldn't maybe agree with because all these negative things, I mean, there must be something behind these, these things in the media and all these rumors about, you know, the image Islam has nowadays. So I thought, oh, I got to keep studying. And I kept studying probably for about four months. And I decided, okay, this is, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue this way. And I set a date for myself. And I started preparing. Um, I got books with transliterated Quran, um, directions how to pray, how to wash before my prayer and get wudu. And I started to memorize these things so that when I said the Shahada, when I said the Declaration of Faith, I would go in 100%, not just, you know, pick and choose the, the rules I wanted to follow. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it because I believe in it, not because, yes. you know. Because it's I your choice. To, correct. MashaAllah. So, yeah. that was how that came. MashaAllah. Uh, we are very pleased to have, to have your sister among us. Uh, you. Dear viewers, we will continue with a journey of Sister Maria Molina uh, after the break. Please stay tuned with us. Welcome back, dear viewers. Uh, we are still with our sister, Maria Molina, and we are joining her in her journey to Islam. Uh, sister, what is the Islamic value or behavior that is the nearest to your heart as, as a Western Muslim now? God consciousness, constant God consciousness. And everything you do, you're, you're thinking, is this going to make me successful now? In, in, in the world while I'm still alive? And is this gonna make me successful after I die? This isn't something I think that most Westerners really think about most of the time. It comes up occasionally, I think, but it's not something you're thinking about, you know, when you're um, drinking water, you're, you know, you're thanking Allah for giving you this, you know, opportunity to have clean water. Exactly. When you're um, serving food 
you know, being conscious about how much you're you're serving, and that and you're tensions. not wasting food, yeah. um, um, helping children study, that you are raising the next generation. Are they going to be going to, you know, are they going to be doing a, a good job? Are they going to be helping? Are they going to be contributing to society? This stuff enters your mind as a Muslim all day long. I didn't have this before. It occurred to me, but it wasn't something I was thinking about. I wasn't planning for the afterlife. I wasn't planning for these types of things. I was just, you know, it was day to day. Yeah. So. MashaAllah. So you started with Tawheed and right away you are discussing Taqwa, MashaAllah. <laughs> so can you describe your feelings right away, right after taking your Shahada? I did it by myself. Um, I had planned for it, like I had said, and I had set a date, and I went ahead and did it. It was right after a vacation. I came back a little early, earlier than my father did, and um, I was in the house by myself, and I said the, the Shahada, the Declaration of Faith, and I felt like, kind of like a weight was lifted off my chest and was finally going in the right direction. I was doing something. I, was, I, w I hadn't turned 19 yet but I was ready to go. MashaAllah. So. MashaAllah, just a very, very early start. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Now, uh, uh, how soon you informed your, your, your family, represented by your father, as, as you are saying? Uh, well, <laughs> um, I, I would have told him right away, but like I said, he was abroad at the time. And it was, it was a little tricky. Um, he knew I was studying Islam, but unfortunately he had been told a lot of negative things by non-Muslims at that time. And understandably, and I can understand it now because I'm a parent, but um, he was really afraid for me. He was told all kinds of bad information. Negative, so, stereotyping. Yeah, and so he was, he was just afraid for me. And so when I told him I finally converted, he said, please don't tell anybody. Please think again. Please, you need to be careful. You, you don't need to be getting into this now. You still have time. You're still young, was which wasn't what I felt at all. So Nobody has a guarantee for tomorrow. So, yeah. so was he angry about your decision? Um, I don't think he was angry as so much as he was afraid for me. Um, I did have relatives that were upset and you know, it was, th they felt that I was telling them, you raised me in a wrong way, which wasn't right, because I think everybody has to take their own path, and everybody does. You don't have to follow what your family does just because that's what they've always been doing. You have to think for yourself, you have to make your own choices and decisions, and this was mine, and so that took them time to understand. But once they saw that I was happy and thriving and, you know, going in, a, in the right direction in life, alhamdulillah, everything just worked itself out. MashaAllah. Uh, and uh, what, what was the reaction of, of other Muslims around you? You know, it was mixed because even for Muslims, you know, a lot of, you know, as, as for, for non-Muslims, they assume because you're born Muslim that you're all the same and you're all following the same rules, but it's not like that either. You have different people who are in different places in their faith. And so I had some friends who were really, alhamdulillah, excited and supportive. And I had some that were not so supportive. Th th those are Muslims or non-Muslims? No, Muslims. Muslims also? Yeah. SubhanAllah. So that was tough. It was, t it was a tough time, um, especially being, I was kind of isolated. Um, most of my friends were, I would say, not supportive. Um, so I had to make my own way and do what I could. And then alhamdulillah, as I 